How you doing fishing freaks? Welcome to today's video. I don't even have coffee. I gotta get energized up. I'm only like halfway bass juiced right now. Now we are cooking with bass juice, ladies and fishing freaks. So what is the story of the day? It is the number one question that I get asked on all social media and in person is, what is your PB bass? Now I've answered this a lot in comments and in person, but I wanted to go ahead and just do a whole video on it and I actually have footage of the bass from years back when I caught it. So I wanted to show you guys, show everyone that has not seen my, my PB fish, my PB largemouth bass, and explain how it happened, how it went down. And this is a very fitting time period because it happened in March. And this is the time of year when those big bass start to move up. You can really catch some giant fat sow belly pigs. And hopefully you guys can catch a mondo after hearing how I caught my bass and where I caught it and everything. So here we go with the tail. I was on Lake Fork. It was a crisp, cold morning. It was probably in the 40s. And this was mid-March. We were about to have our, our first full moon of the month. And I was on a guide trip. Back then I, I guided nearly every day in the springtime, especially in March and April, because that's when the, the big bass are really moving up shallow and you have the best time uh, to catch those big bass. I knew it was gonna be one of those tough days because we had high pressure and I needed to go slow. And one of my favorite things to do when it's tough like that is just drag something like a jig or a shaky head or some sort of of worm. I'm not a huge fan of Carolina rigging, just I don't know why, but I, I love to have a jig and kind of do the same thing where I can really feel everything that's going on. And it's just the thought of the, the bite that happens on a jig is exciting. So I'm going into this large creek arm and I'm looking for creek channel swings or bends. And that's basically, if you have a map, if you have a map chip, you can really find them easily. But if you don't, if you're on the shore, or you don't have electronics, you can look for those creek channel swings by looking on the bank for signs of, of grooves cut into the bank that are steeper or bigger trees. The bigger trees soak up more water along the cr old creek bed so they grow bigger so you can look for those. So I'm idling along about halfway into this creek and I see a nice little creek channel bend right, right there and there wasn't a whole lot of trees on it but it just looked like a good steep stopping place, a good staging area uh, for bass to hold up before they move up into the shallows and start spawning. The water was about 60 degrees. It wasn't quite that 62 magic number yet. The bass hadn't fully committed to moving up shallow, so they were still on these little staging spots. Now I've only got one client this day, and we are both throwing jigs. We had caught a few bass already, on some points, on some little secondary points, just casting the jig out and dragging it through the, the fields of trees, or you know stump fields as they're called. And I'm just dragging it along very slowly. When I feel something good, I'll just stop, let it sit there, and it's just kind of the death crawl. But that's when we were getting our bites. When that jig was paused for three, four, five seconds next to a good object like a big tree stump or a tree that's when we were getting our bites and we hadn't caught anything huge yet the biggest one we caught was about four pounds keep in mind this is lake fork where there's some really big bass and i've got my my jig thrown out i'm throwing a three quarter ounce jig and i'm going to show it to you guys right now this is not the exact one but this is very similar this is a half ounce this isn't a three quarters i love these jigs these are the old uh, impact jigs from lft lures Love the head design. This is what's called a, a casting jig. It's just kind of an overall jig. It's got a, a, a keel on the bottom where you can kind of cast it out at anything. It's not quite a full-blown flipping jig, but you can definitely use it for that. Um, it's got a, a good brush guard on it. A really awesome uh, chameleon paint head. I don't think I've ever seen these on any other jigs, but it just kind of looks like a bluegill uh, you know how it's got that iridescent like glittery chameleon style look It's got that on it natural colored skirt and then a unique trailer. This is what's called a, a hyper freak LFT lures makes this and it is basically just a big flapper on the end just like that So I had that rigged up three-quarter ounce dragging. 
I had my rod and my line set up pretty beefy for this lake this time of year you never know what you're gonna get into so I had 65 pound braided line with a 25 pound fluorocarbon leader pure fluorocarbon leader and I also had a heavy action seven foot four inch rod so this is a big setup you can drive the fish away from the trees if you get a big one on you know seven eight pound plus fish so I was set up and good to go there and then all of a sudden I look up and it just feels like my jig is is falling when it shouldn't be it's like it's not having bottom contact it doesn't feel solid on there it just feels like loose and squishy so automatically out of reaction boom set the hook and it just doesn't move it's just solid I'm like oh this could be a good one this could really be a good one and when the water's colder the fish don't tend to fight as hard the fish fight really hard when it's you know around 70 degrees but when it's around that you know 58 59 60 degree mark they don't fight as hard as at least largemouth don't as when it's a little bit warmer so the fish isn't fighting that hard I just know I've got a really good fish on the line I start reeling it and my guide clients like is it a good one is it a good one I'm like I don't know I can't really tell yet but it's going to deep water the spot where I got the bite was in about 10 to 12 feet of water and then it was going out towards like 20 feet of water so I'm reeling I'm reeling I'm reeling I've got good pressure on the fish and then it starts to come up and when it comes up and I see the head on this thing I'm like get the net get the net it's a giant it's a giant get the net full black tip age crisis mode oh, baby, oh a my god dude there. they're all under the boat oh, holy my guy client's freaking out more than me he's like i've never seen a bass that big that's a giant that's a giant he's getting the net i've got the fish it's just wallering at the top when a bass gets over like eight pounds it can't really jump out of the water it's kind of rare to see him jump fully out of the water it just kind of wallers at the top and so i'm just kind of dragging this thing in and then my customer puts the net right under the fish and I just drag it right in there and I can't believe how fat this fish was it was just chocked full of eggs so I'm so excited I thought it was like an 18 pound bass <laughs> looking at it at first I put the fish in the live well and I'm just hanging on to it everybody's having a slow morning I'm checking in with my other guide buddies and you know nobody's really catching anything so I'm like, I cannot wait to bring this fish in and show everybody and shock everybody. And we're just sitting there at the dock and people are coming in we're like, how y'all doing? Having, having a good morning? Yeah, it's kind of tough, kind of tough. A little slow, a little slow. I got, we got a pretty good one. Pretty, pretty decent one in there, you wanna check it out. So everybody's going up to my live well, they're opening the lid and that thing looks like a football, it's so wide and thick and one of my good buddies had a certified scale so he was like let's get this thing on the scale let's see how much it weighs and it was 11 and a half pounds but he told me he said you should have weighed this thing as soon as you caught it because it had been sitting in the live well for about three and a half hours and fish lose their water weight under stress so i probably could have had a few more ounces on there and it'd be even bigger but that's a lesson if you're fishing this time of year make sure you have a scale that you can you can really trust and weigh them right on the spot don't wait like i did i was trying to be you know cocky braggadocious and bring it in and hey let's wait in front of everybody weigh it right there get photo evidence and then let it go so you're probably wondering what did this fish look like how fat was it what was it like in real life well we've got the video footage to show you so check this out 11 pound bass right here caught on a lft impact jig and a hyper freak are in March right here. And uh, this is the kind of fish you can catch in March. And especially on a jig. And we're gonna let her go right here, right where we caught her. She's yoked up, getting ready to spawn. And we'll revive her and she'll make beautiful babies. Big babies for Lake Fort. See you later, sweetheart. Look how she just followed that trail. See that? Amazing. Awesome. So that's how it went down, guys. It was it was actually not a crazy fight like you would think a giant bass would put up. I've caught many other, you know, six, seven, and eight pound bass that have 
put up much bigger fights. But it definitely was one of the most beautiful bass I've ever caught, regardless of size, just the colors and the girth and everything. I mean, that fish had never been caught, didn't have a scar, a mark on it. It was just totally beautiful. So I've decided that this year, finally, I'm going to get that thing mounted. I, I wrote down all the measurements from that date. You guys uh, that have never done this before, you can, you can do that. You don't have to have the actual fish. You just take the measurement of the girth, the, uh, the length, and then get good pictures. And then there's a lot of good taxidermists that can make that replica exactly like that fish for you. And you can just let the fish go and you don't have to kill the fish. So I'll keep you guys updated when that mount is done and up on the wall, but I'm excited to, to get that done finally. I have no bass of my own actually mounted, which sounds crazy, but they're just expensive. And you know, when I was a young guy and didn't have any money at all, I just didn't want to spend the money on that. I thought there was more important things to spend money on. So hopefully I can catch a big bass that breaks that record. And then you guys can ask me what my PB is all over again. And we can start this whole thing over. If you like the story time, guys, go ahead and hit the like button. I enjoy doing it. I don't always remember everything when I'm on the water and I'm trying to fish and I'm trying to explain things. So getting off the water and being able, being able to explain and elaborate a lot better and more detailed is fun for me. So hit the like button if you like it. And I actually did get out yesterday and do some fishing and I caught my biggest bass of 2017. I caught a Mondo, guys. So stay tuned for that video. And subscribe to the channel. I want to do at least one story every month just kind of doing whatever, you know, story of a big bass or something that happened on the water. I've got a lot of cool stories from, you know, being a guide and all that. So subscribe to the channel for more bass juice story time fun. And that is it for this video. Mondo coming on the next one and I'll catch you guys later. There's a dead gum bird in the tackle room. There it goes. See you later, Finch.